All right. Um, so um, let me introduce uh, Clint Kohlmeyer, who's here from um, ASI, who's our flexible spending account benefit uh, administrators. Um, and um, I'll just pass it along to her to, to start the presentation and go from there. Thanks, Clark. Good afternoon, everybody. As Clark mentioned, I'm Kalina Kohlmeyer. I'm the account manager for the flexible spending account program through ASI Flex. Uh, so today we're going to go over the plan year for 2022 and what you can expect for that to be able to enroll during open enrollment. So to start off, let's generally go over what is an FSA. Many of you may already be familiar with it, having already been enrolled in the plan in the past, but there may be some of you who continue to have questions or may not be familiar at all. So a flexible spending account is a year-to-year -year account, so you have to enroll each year. You set aside pre-tax dollars to spend on medical bills for prescriptions, doctor's visits, supplies, things like that. Uh, there are two types of plans, one's for healthcare and one's for dependent care, and I'll go further into those. Dependent care would be for your child's daycare expenses, not healthcare. That's why there's two different plans. So uh, you may enroll in any health insurance to be in the plan. You don't have to be in a specific health insurance through the state of Vermont. Uh, so that's something to be aware of. And as I mentioned, there's two types of accounts. So how does the FSA work? So to consider enrolling, you start by estimating your expenses and what you think you might spend in the next year out of pocket for medical or dependent care expenses. Throughout the year, you'll make pre-tax contributions from your payroll. Throughout the year, you'll also incur eligible expenses. Once those expenses are incurred, you can submit claims and when you submit the claim, you then get reimbursed. So some rules to keep in mind, we mentioned before that you have to enroll every year with a new election and you wanna spend all of those funds during the year. So uh, use the, we have offer a worksheet so you can estimate what you may need in the next year uh, because it's a use it or lose it plan. So be sure to spend down all those funds. You do have the option to carry over a certain amount of funds into the next plan year, and I'll go into that a little bit. So your expenses must be incurred during your period of coverage, which is the plan year. So if you have a qualifying event that allows you to enroll mid-year, such as uh, getting married or having a baby, then your plan year is going to start when you make that election. So you'll need to incur expenses during that time after you make that election. But if you enroll during open enrollment, you have that full plan year that you have your coverage period. So from January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022. Again, you do not have to be covered by any other health plan. Uh, you can use the funds to pay for expenses for your spouse or your dependent children. The election remains in effect for the plan year unless you experience a qualifying change of status. Um, so I mentioned that you could enroll mid-year, but you can also unenroll mid-year, so you can cancel that election. Um, that does not change what you were enrolled for during the period of time that you were in the plan. It would just stop it at the point that you qualify to stop it. For example, if you get a divorce, I mentioned marriage earlier. Uh, something to keep in mind with FSAs, you can access all of the health care funds at any point in the plan year. So that means if you have a emergency that comes up on January 5th, okay, and you haven't put any funds in the account yet, but you are set up through payroll to have those deductions come out, you incur that expense of, let's just say, $1,000 of your $2,000 election, you can still claim that at that time as long as the expense is incurred and you'll get reimbursed that amount that you claim for. Um, so those funds are available as of the first day of the plan year. And then again, if you don't use your funds throughout the plan year, you could risk forfeiting them at the end of the plan year. Vermont does offer that carryover provision I mentioned earlier, so you can carry over up to $550 of your 2022 election into 2023. And what that means 
is it's not a grace period. It lets you, you know, use as much of your funds during 2022 as you can. And if you do have any remaining 550 or less, that can be moved into 2023 for you to use during that calendar year. Now, the state of Vermont, if you do not re-enroll, you do only get to carry those funds up to one year. So be aware of that. So to avoid forfeitures, because that it scares a lot of people that it's use it or lose it. You know, I put funds in, I don't want to lose the funds that I put into the account. Well, plan for predictable or recurring expenses. You know, if you have a prescription that you know you have regularly, or you go to see the chiropractor, or you uh, you know, you have an annual doctor's visit that you know you do every year, plan for those types of expenses. And then you can give yourself a little leeway from there. Um, review your prior year's expenses. Use that as a guide because, you know, usually things happen kind of on a pattern for people. Uh, be conservative. You do not have to make the full election unless you know that you'll be using that much. And be familiar with other tools that you can use the expenses for. So, uh, ASIflex.com, we have an expense estimator and eligible expense listing. The FSA store is a separate entity, but they're a great resource for over-the-counter products. You can order from them. We also have an exclusive agreement with them that I'll go over later. And then, of course, you have the carryover option. So, uh, again, if you spend down your funds to 550 or below, you're not risking forfeiture at that time into the 2023 plan year. So let's go over some of the healthcare expenses uh, that go along with the plan. So the minimum to elect is $130, maximum $2750. This for healthcare FSA, it includes prescriptions, office co-pays, deductibles, lab work. You can claim mileage to and from providers. That includes to and from pharmacies. That mileage amount changes every year, but we do put that information up on our website. Again, asiflex.com. It's on the main page and you just scroll down and it's in one of the uh, banners, the notice banners. You can claim over the counter supplies such as band-aids, sunscreen, uh, pill holders, blood pressure monitors, things like that. Uh, braces, of course, are uh, it's meaning like elbow braces, knee braces, things like that. You can claim for vision expenses. So that includes people get confused on is the protection plans for eyeglasses are not eligible because they're more like an insurance premium. So if you get a protection plan for your eyeglasses or prescription sunglasses, those are going to be, you'll have to pay for that out of pocket. You can still cover the glasses. You'll just have to pay for that warranty, that protection plan. So something to be aware of. The other medical expense that you can cover is dental. So exams, x-rays, fillings, orthodontia, crowns, different things like that. Veneers are not eligible, uh, but there's a lot of dental work that is, so be familiar with that. And then hearing exams, hearing aids, and batteries for hearing aid supplies. So that kind of generally covers the healthcare FSA. Uh, again, we have a more extensive listing on our website, and the FSA store also has an extensive extensive listing of eligible items that you can refer to. Here's just a shortened list to give you an idea of what's covered. Um, some changes that occurred last year is that menstrual care products are now eligible under the plan and prescription or non-prescription drugs, sorry, like Tylenol, ibuprofen, allergy medicine, those are now eligible without a script. So that's something that has continued that was reestablished last year, which is great. Also, PPE for COVID is also eligible. So things like masks and hand sanitizers, those items that you are necessary for COVID would be eligible to claim. And there's more information about that on our website as well. 
So the other plan dependent care, again, this is for your child's daycare expenses or dependent adult care. This is not for your dependent's health care expenses. Anything health related is going to be under the health care FSA. This is for actual daycare uh, for while you're working a full time student or seeking employment. And this is if you're married, it would be that both spouses have to be working for you to be eligible for the expenses that are incurred. So it also has a minimum of $130, maximum of $5,000, maximum of $2,500 if you're married and filing separately on your income tax returns. So the Dependent Care FSA covers babysitting while you're at work, preschool or nursery school, uh, before or after school care, covers day camps. Now, not overnight camps, those are not eligible, but day camps that your child's attending for the purpose of you staying gainfully employed and adult care age 13 and older if the adult requires daycare. You have different claim filing options for both health care and dependent care. So you can claim online at asiflex.com. You, if you don't have an account detail set up, you can register for that once your account's set up. And you can, it's an online claim form. You can simply uh, scan your file, your document that you want to submit with it or take a picture on your smartphone because we also offer the app. As you can see, this uh, lady here is working on her phone. That's for the mobile app. I often take pictures of my documents and then submit them through the mobile app as a claim. You can fax your claims or you can even mail them to us. Uh, you're not limited to any of those options, so feel free to take advantage of all of them. Though I will say that online and the mobile app are going to be your quickest, most efficient way of getting claims processed. But that's just because you don't have to worry about snail mail, especially with the US Postal Service slowing down mail times. And facts can sometimes come through blurry. Uh, so that's why I say online, mobile app are the most efficient, but all of them are great options for you to utilize. So I mentioned earlier about an exclusive thing with the FSA store. And what that is, is the cardless pay option. This was implemented earlier in the year of 2021. So some of you may already be slightly familiar with it, uh, but it is a newer option. So I wanted to just go over it a little bit. So again, this is exclusive between ASI Flex and FSA Store. And what this is, is you can actually attach your account with your login with FSA Store when you buy things online through that provider. Sorry. <laughs> and what this means is you don't have to use a card. You may have the ASI Flex debit card, which you could keep on file there as well. But this way, if you don't, or if you don't know where it is and you haven't put it on file with FSA store, say it's the first time you're going out there, you don't have to put any card information in. You simply go through your account detail, select the FSA store option. It'll take you through the process of connecting. And then once you're connected, you can shop. And then when you go to pay, uh, you check out, it lets you select your ASI Flex account and you pay. And it just uses, it pays it directly out of the account. So you don't have to submit documentation. Um, if you were paying with a regular credit card, you don't have to worry about any of that. So something to keep in mind, we do have an infographic available. I believe Clark has that from last year. So if you need to see something about it, uh, we have that available. Uh, you can check it out online or you can call our customer service department if you have additional questions about it, or you can ask me today. So it's a great feature. I've used it myself. And I love using it, honestly. So uh, I'll go into a little bit more about the mobile app now. So again, the mobile app's free. Uh, it We offer a video tutorial on our website. You can use it on a smartphone or tablet. Uh, like I said, you snap a picture of your document. I recommend making sure it's not blurry and probably cropping it on your phone. Uh, to make sure that there's not, you know, it's nice and viewable. Because sometimes when it's a large picture and the document's small, that can make it a little bit harder to read for our customer service department. But uh, once you've logged into the app, 
you fill out the claim form information and you click next. It asks to upload documentation. It automatically brings up your photos for you to select or you can take a picture there and then you submit it. So uh, you can do this right from the provider or often what I'll do is I'll get the document from the provider. I'll go ahead and take the picture of it in case I lose the document. I don't know about anybody else, but that happens with me <laughs> quite a bit. And then uh, I'll already have that picture on my phone. So when I need to submit documentation or when I'm ready to submit a claim because I have a few items together, then I have it all right there. You can also use the mobile app to check your balance 24 seven. The online account detail, which I mentioned earlier, uh, is similar to the mobile app. So in order to access the mobile app, you will have to register online first. Uh, but they're a really similar setup. The difference is just based off of the formatting for what you're using a computer versus a phone. But it's the essentially the same self-service menu that you access, file claims, view your account detail, what your balance is, uh, all of that information. So you can read secure messages that we send you if you submit a claim and we need additional information. We'll send that message to you through your account detail under those secure messages. Uh, you should also get statements through the secure message center if you're signed up for electronic correspondence, and that would be email and or text. So I mentioned the FSA card earlier. This card is free. It's for the healthcare FSA account. Uh, it provides an easy way to pay. However, the card is not paperless, so something to keep in mind. You can use the card for co-pays if you're under the state's insurance, and we have that noted on the account, which the state provides us that information. Then we should be able to pick up your copay information and automatically take care of those transactions. If you use a provider who has an inventory control system, uh, which is most pharmacies, not all, but most, including the FSA store, if you do use the debit card rather than setting up for the cardless pay, they send us the information, so we won't request documentation there. If it's a reoccurring expense, say you go to the chiropractor once a month and you submit documentation the first month, then every month after that, as long as their card system doesn't update and change any merchant information, we should be able to pick that up as a reoccurring expense for the same amount at the same provider. So there will be, you won't have to continue to submit documentation for a recurring expense. But for anything that doesn't match the copay that we're not provided the information on and that's not reoccurring, we will request additional documentation on. So that's something to keep in mind. And that's what it means by the use of the card is not paperless. Uh, this is something that's regulated by the IRS. So just so you're aware, that's why we ask for this documentation. It's just to make sure that the expenses you use the card for are eligible out of the healthcare plan. So when getting the cards, you get a free set of two cards mailed to you. It has you as the uh, participant, your names on both cards, but a spouse dependents should be able to use the card without any issues. If you choose to re-enroll, we will just reload that card in the next plan year. If you have funds left over that need to carry forward, those funds will carry forward for the next plan year. If you do not re-enroll, we do recommend holding on to the cards. They are good for five years. So if you decide to re-enroll on a later plan year within that time frame, that's what the funds will be loaded on. So uh, we won't have to send you new cards. There's additional information about the debit cards on our website uh, under programs, debit cards, where there's FAQs, a quick guide, and a wallet card, which breaks out what we request for card documentation, provider, cost of the expense incurred, patient, uh, data service. There's one other item, I apologize. <laughs> Uh, going through all this information, I don't have it right off the top of my head, but it lists out all that stuff so you can keep it in your wallet. And when you go to the provider, you can simply show it to them saying, I need a document with this information. It's come in handy for a lot of people. So you'll find that on our website. Uh, you use the card simply by swiping it. It's used as a credit card, so uh, you might have to sign. You can set up a pin if you want to use it as a debit card. Either way, the funds come out of the account. 
if the card doesn't work when you swipe it, then um, they might just try it again or you can contact our customer service department, but that rarely happens. Most of the time things go through just fine. You can then ask for that itemized statement for the service provided. And then as I mentioned earlier, you can take a picture of it or submit it as another method uh, when we request for that documentation. But you don't have to fill out a claim form for taking care of that documentation because the provider's already getting paid when you swipe that card. So here's what the claim documentation must provide. The who, who the service is being provided for, that's the patient, the what, the description of the service, which is what I was forgetting earlier, sorry about that. The where is the provider, the when is the date of service, and the how much is the dollar amount that you owe, that you incurred. Now, if it has to go to insurance, we do recommend that you wait to submit, you wait to pay the provider until after insurance has applied, because sometimes insurance will cover what the provider's not expecting. Okay, and uh, different types of documentation that work for that includes uh, EOBs from the insurance provider. It's a great form of documentation to support transactions because we can see everything on that EOB from the insurance company. Uh, an itemized statement, if you don't have insurance, prescriptions, a pharmacy receipt or printout from the pharmacy, and that's if they're not on that inventory control system that I mentioned earlier. Over the counter items uh, such as Tylenol and you know Band-Aids, things like that, you'll wanna submit the merchant receipt. So let's just say you go to Walgreens or Walmart and purchase it just keep that re transaction receipt and you can submit that. We do request that you do not submit credit card receipts. Those are just showing that a payment was made. We can see that a payment was made when you use the card. It's the other information that we're looking for. And if you have any questions on that, just let us know. So go green. Uh, we're very much in support of staying green and helping the environment. Our building is 100% solar powered. So uh, that's something that we've strived to make sure we're reducing our impact on the environment. So we do encourage signing up for email and text alerts, uh, avoid those paper notices and delays from mail. We also encourage ACH payments, so direct deposit to your bank for reimbursements. Uh, you won't have to wait for a check in the mail or that risk if it gets lost in the mail for whatever reason or is returned to us if the address isn't quite right, having that direct deposit set up, we process the claim, you'll see that reimbursement within approximately two to three business days, depending on your bank. So file those claims, mobile app or online, because it's a lot quicker and easier, as I mentioned earlier. And we actually do offer an option for, an additional option for dependent care. So you can actually have dependent care providers sign the claim form. So if they don't provide or are unable to provide you a statement of services, for example, if you have a babysitter, they may not be able to provide a statement showing those dates of service and all that information that a daycare provider may. You can actually print off one of our claim forms, have the information filled out to submit the claim, and then the provider can sign that claim form verifying that that information is accurate. It essentially turns that claim form into the itemized statement, and then you can submit that. Uh, since it is printed off, you can still do it by fax or mail, but you can also upload it as your documentation to file a claim online. Something else that we are working to offer across the US, it is only implemented in a couple places right now. Um, so just to have a heads up on it is we are working to partner directly with daycare providers to be able to pay them directly through your account. So keep your eyes and ears open on that. There may be more information to come. So just a heads up. Some online resources to take advantage of during this open enrollment period. If you're already enrolled in the plan, access your account detail, look at what you've spent the last year. It's a great resource to know what you may need for the coming year. Uh, review messages that are sent to you. You can manage your personal settings in there as well. So if you wanna set up that direct deposit, even in the current plan year, you can go on to your account detail and do so as right now or as soon as we get off this meeting. So uh, we have that extensive eligible and ineligible listing, expense listing. The FSA store is available. 
They have thousands of eligible FSA products, uh, frequently asked questions, expense estimator and tax savings calculator. Uh, we have lots of educational videos available and we have all the IRS forms and publications available if you feel more comfortable reviewing those to be familiar with the plans. Important dates to know for the state of Vermont for the FSA, your open enrollment for 2022 is currently going on, started today, goes through the month of November. Claims must be incurred from January 1st, 2022 to December 31st, 2022, and that means actually had the service provided. Um, so if your child's going into a day camp and you pay in February, you can't claim in February. You have to prove the child attended day camp in the summer, so get a document at that time and submit it for reimbursement at that time. And it can show payment was made in February, but the services were incurred in the summer. So something to keep in mind, services have to be incurred. And then the deadline to submit claims is March 31st. And so once March 31st hits, any funds that are left in the account that are over 550 for 2022 will be forfeited. Anything 550 and under will carry over into that new plan year. So don't wait until the last minute because it's very easy to miss the date. So just wanna make you aware of that. If you need to contact us with any questions or concerns about your account, uh, our customer service department is available 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturdays Eastern time and 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday Eastern time. So uh, we have those extended hours to make it convenient for you. You don't have to call during while you're at work. Uh, you actually have quite a bit of time after you get off work to be able to reach out to us if necessary. Our website's available. You can view your account detail. We do offer an email, ASI at ASIflex.com for customer service questions. We do request that you do not put attachments to that email. You cannot send claims to that email, and that is due to HIPAA regulations. So just a heads up on that. Our customer service phone number, 1-800-659-3035. Uh, they're available at those times I mentioned before, and it is somebody live will answer your call. There is no uh, electronic phone prompt for you. You'll simply get, uh, thank you for calling, please hold on the line. It's usually a pretty quick wait time, unless it's a super busy season, uh, but you'll get one of our customer service representatives directly on the phone who will be able to assist you with everything that they can. And if they can't, they'll escalate you to one of the management. Uh, and if you wanna mail anything to us, our PO box, is 6044 Columbia, Missouri 65205. So that was a lot of information. So anybody who has questions, as Clark mentioned before, feel free to present. All right, thank you very much, Kalina. There's actually been quite a few questions. I think I've gotten most of them, but unfortunately I couldn't get all of them. Um, so I'm going to sort of <laughs> rapid fire them to you here. and. And hopefully we can get through as many as possible. I hope people don't mind staying on for a couple extra minutes. Um, and as I said in the chat, if there, for whatever reason, there's something that um, that I can't get to, uh, or that Clean has to research, we can. Um, I'll post a follow up um, information on the on the website. Uh, let's see. So for uh, you had mentioned um, mileage reimbursement. Um, can you get that for a dental mm -hmm. visit as well? Yes. Yes. Okay. So that's dental and medical. Yes, dental, okay. medical, vision, prescriptions. If you okay. go to the provider, then you can claim that. You can actually also claim uh, parking if you have to pay for parking to go to the provider. Just hold on to your receipt for that or bus fare. Uh, so things like that are eligible as well. You just have to, for mileage, you don't have to have anything to support it. You just fill out the claim form and be sure to list the total number of miles and the total amount. Uh, but for if you have to pay for parking or transit to the provider, hold on to the receipt for that and you can be reimbursed as well. Okay, great. Um, I know that the 550 is, a, is an automatic rollover. Um, do they have to sign up for an account in that second year um, or is it just open, is the 550 rollover and automatically they have an account and eligible for that? Well, uh, Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, the state of Vermont, you have to, if you enroll, it'll carry, it'll continue carrying forward. But if you don't re-enroll in that next year, it'll carry forward for that one year. So right. if you enroll in 2022, 
then your funds will automatically enroll or not enroll automatically carry over into 2023. However, if you do not re-enroll for 2023, you will only have that carryover for that one additional year. Right. But in 2023, do they have to enroll or is the 550 basically their enrollment? If you follow. Oh, I understood. Sorry about that. <laughs> that can be the enrollment. You can enroll okay. and have that 550 in addition to what you elect for 2023. So that could be in addition to the maximum of 2750 because the 2750 is your maximum election if that's the max at right. the time. And that 550 would be in addition to. Uh, if you okay. don't re-enroll, then 550 will essentially be your election. Okay, great. Thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure. Um, yes. You had mentioned, um, oh, no worries. You had mentioned a few times that, um, you know, you purchased through the pharmacy. And it sounds like you sort of answered this on one of your last slides where you can purchase not just from a pharmacy, but also from uh, Walmart. Uh, does that also extend to online services like Amazon? Yeah, I mean, you could do mailing prescriptions or if you purchase over-the-counter supplies from Amazon, FSA okay. stores, an online vendor, uh, those apply. It's just a matter of if they aren't part of that inventory control system where they can send us the information, then you may have to obtain that itemized statement and submit that for reimbursement. Okay. Or supply and, if and you use your Does that include... Card. Sure. And does that include the shipping and um, tax costs as well? Like the whole cost yes. or is it just well, the, item cost, the whole cost? If it's FSA eligible, there shouldn't be any taxes on it. Uh, but sometimes there are. And yes, shipping and taxes that are applied do are eligible for reimbursement under it. Okay. All right. Next question. Um, and good job so far. Thank you. Uh, Let's see. I'm, I'm going to read this one verbatim. Uh, is it okay to wait before submitting the documentation until or if the app says the documentation is needed? Yes. Actually, we recommend that you wait until it requests documentation uh, just so that when you use the card, it shows in real time on your account. So we can see if there's a transaction pending, but if we receive the document, we may not be able to apply it yet. And it could still be that it's a provider who uh, maybe you use your own personal pharmacy. That's not one of those big ones, but they are still a part of that inventory control system. You just don't know that they are. So there's about a five day waiting period that they may send us that information. So we don't request the documentation at that time. So you, if you submit it to us, we'll hold it on the account, but you can definitely wait to send it until we request it. Just be aware that if you don't submit it within a timely manner, um, we send out multiple notices and on the third notice your card could be suspended if there is still an outstanding amount and that's just because funds did come out of the account we have to qualify it so just something to be aware of okay um uh one of the chats uh said that they that they feel like a lot of healthcare providers do not provide adequate documentation and mm -hmm. what are your suggestions for to handle that We've experienced that a lot as well, especially those smaller providers. So I completely understand that question. That wallet card that I mentioned, even if you don't use the debit card, you can carry that wallet card with you. It shows uh, what we're looking for and it's just, you can print it out on your own printer, cut it out, fold it up. You can tape it up to laminate it if you want or not, and just slip it in your purse or wallet. And then when you go to the provider and say, you know, you, you get done with the visit, and you say, I need an itemized statement showing what my visit was for today and the amount. If they seem kind of confused by it, simply pull out that card and show them and say, these are the items I need. It needs to be this information. And that that's usually pretty helpful. Um, so if they have to type it out themselves, they have all that information that's necessary. You don't have to try and remember it off the top of your head and, and they don't have to keep asking you for it. Uh, aside from that, if you have insurance and you have a hard time getting it from the provider, wait to get that explanation of benefits from the insurance company. A lot of insurance companies have online portals now that once they've received the claim and processed it, they'll mail it to you probably, but you can also go online and pull it from your account through them. And if you can pull it from online, then you can just save it on your computer and upload it through online. Nice and simple. So... 
Okay. Um, really easy one for you. Are vitamins and supplements covered? Vitamins and supplements. <laughs> so yes, but only with a doctor's letter of medical necessity. And that's because vitamins and supplements are dual purpose. Many people take them without being sick and not needing them medically. Uh, so unfortunately, the IRS does regulate that you have to have a, a doctor's letter stating the reason that you have to take them. Now, prenatal for pregnancy, those are automatically eligible. Uh, but other ones that like just vitamin C or something. Yeah, you do have to have a doctor's letter. The doctor's letter is good for one year and it's eligible as of the date of that letter. So if you have that on account, you can submit it with your receipt, then you'd be eligible to claim for one year. Okay. Can, are they um, able to set up two different bank accounts for the direct deposit so they could have the health reimbursements go into one account but the dependent care go into another account? Unfortunately, you can only set up one. Um, but a way that I guess you could handle that independently is you can submit your claim separate. You don't have to submit healthcare and dependent care at the same time, but you can. And then when you get one, you can just have it moved over into a different account if it's with the same bank, but we can only set up one direct deposit account. Okay. That makes sense. All right. Um, well, I don't want to, I don't want to keep everyone too much longer. I think that got through most of the questions. Um, the website for the, um, uh, the website address is right now. It's, I think last year we put the recordings of the sessions under the um, the open enrollment page, but I will verify that. Um, but either way, when when um, when they become eligible or when when the recordings are done and I'm able to put them up and, and post them, uh, it'll be on the benefits website. And we'll make sure that on the benefits website there's a um, there's a nice large heading about where to go to get the recordings of the, the virtual benefit sessions. Um, so thank you again to everyone who came. Um, I hope I got to almost all the questions, I believe. Um, and thank you for Kalina for the presentation. I think it was very helpful. Um, and I hope everyone has a great day. Thanks everyone. And just let me know if you have any questions or as Clark mentioned, if you have any others, you can let him or the other HR team know and he can come to me for answers if necessary. Great. Have a good day everyone.